present. No need to wait till the end. Just type your questions in using the chat function or raise your virtual hand which you will see on your screen during the question and answer session. I also request all the panelists to please present in time so that we have enough time left for question and answers. We have a friendly CNS cricket which will sound this alarm when one minute is left for panelists. So you will hear the voice of this cricket and that gives you just one more minute to present your, uh, to finish your presentation. Thanks for your cooperation. Mr. Ashok Ramsuru is a senior celebrated and award winning journalist from South African Broadcasting Corporation or CB, CABAC who has kindly consented to moderate the webinar. Over to you Ashok. I think Ashok is still not online. So we will begin. I request my, our first panelist, Dr. Tara Singh Baum, who is a regional advisor for tobacco control at the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease of the Union to present. Over to you, Dr. Baum. Is Dr. Bob there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the, uh, this is, uh, it's a really great event that you have organized. Uh, I would say, the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I have some other, I have to leave quickly. So I go quickly on my presentation. Uh, globally, tobacco is uh, one of the biggest killer uh, at, uh, at this uh, stage currently that we are facing both in developing and developed countries. Uh, the Most of the, the smokers, about uh, the 85% of the smokers, they live in the developing countries and those countries where we, we can see the problem of both communicable and non-communicable disease. So the, uh, if you look at the, the, my slide, uh, uh, the Smoking prevalence among males is really big and alarming in a developing setting, especially in the Africa, Asia, and uh, the, the other developing countries. So uh, the, uh, these all are because of the, the many factors. One of the big factors is, is closely associated with education, poverty, and other socioeconomic factors in these countries. So the, on the other hand, uh, smoking uh, the prevalence rate quite, uh, uh, the, I mean, it's, uh, it's increasing among the females, but it's not as compared uh, as with the male. But the, the, the tobacco industry is targeting to attract the females and children in, uh, in uh, most of the, in the developing uh, and uh, resource poor settings. So the, that is also another the area so we, as a global public health community, uh, think and work together uh, as the field and uh, the ground levels. So the, in the other hand, the, the, in the smokeless tobacco is uh, a big problem. Now is a, we can see the, big, the, the prevalence is quite rampant in the uh, Indian subcontinents, like uh, in India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal, Afghanistan, Myanmar, uh, and it's now is uh, spreading throughout the country, uh, throughout the world. Uh, the, uh, so it's another the big issue now that we need to deal and address quickly. So just for the example of Myanmar, if you look at the graph that I have shared, the, the uh, chewing tobacco is a really huge problem. More than 60% of males, they do smoking, and uh, the rates are con increasing air by air. And also the, the chewing tobacco among females is another big uh, issue in, in, in a setting like in Myanmar, where the, uh, the, the health uh, the setting is really poor, the government's commitment to, uh, to enhance the public health program, including tobacco control, is also the, is one of the big challenges in, in Myanmar. But in other hands, there, there are many other factors that fuels the tobacco uh, use in, in the country, uh, for example, tobacco industry and other tobacco groups. 
So the, the, the overall, the, as I mentioned earlier, tobacco kills more than 5 million people uh, every year. So you know, the deaths are now, there is more we can see in, a, in the developing countries, especially in, in the CRO and Euro and even the, uh, in uh, African countries. And those, those deaths will be is, is, is increasing year by year in, in a developing settings. So the, uh, in the other hand, the, the family and the smokers and the individual and society bear a lot of costs due to the tobacco use in, uh, uh, in our societies. Yes, of course, there are health risks. And in addition to the health risks, there are the, the, the financial problems and social and economical the issues closely associated with the families and also with the, uh, or, uh, with the societies. So yeah, the, uh, so just for example, so if, if uh, on you know the attack of Marlboro, or uh, the if uh, the if they buy in a developing setting, especially in like in Bangladesh, the the attack, uh, the price of a pack of uh, the the Marlboro is equivalent to the six kilogram of rice. So that is the situation in a setting. The similar situation in uh, Indonesia, uh, in my country Nepal, and in uh, many other the the countries. So the cigarettes are very, very cheap, and they are easily accessible, affordable to uh, in, in in these countries. Uh, so the the, uh, the I would like to summarize here: the, there is a huge the the, the health, the, the the loss, and economic loss, social loss, and also the the, the uh, as a whole as a societal the loss due to tobacco use that we are facing currently. Uh, in many uh, the, the countries, uh, so the, as, as a, you, uh, some of the, uh, the previous speaker already mentioned that tobacco use is one of the big risk factor for lung cancers. So it's uh, not only the tobacco use, also secondhand smokes. Also, there's a, it's a big factor for, for the lung cancer uh, so globally. So the, uh, we can we can see there is one example from the U.S. is a since from 1990s to until 2009s. The, when the smoking is a, uh, the, the increase, uh, the, the, at the same time the lung cancer also the, the increase. Uh, so the, if the, the, when the smoking rate is going down, the, the cancer, the, uh, the, the, the death also going down. So it's a, it, it shows the great really gives the, the, the the evidence that tobacco, tobacco, tobacco is a tobacco cease. We have to really eradicate and eliminate the tobacco to improve the public health and to eliminate or uh, to uh, uh, or the eliminate the tobacco-related disease. So, but it's a long battle that so we have to fight together. There are the uh, there's so many the international responses now we can see uh, this, uh, around the world. That's one of the uh, the, the best example that you can say WHO claim of convention on tobacco controls until now 180 of the countries uh, they have already signed and most of these countries are implementing the tobacco control at the country levels. So from the individual and philanthropic perspective, Bloomberg Initiative, Bill and Mandela Gates Foundation, they are really the, the driving the, 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 the civil society, governments uh, and the academia the, the, the commitments for the public health and tobacco control programs. The recently, the, the SDGs has also they identified that uh, the tobacco control is one of the best way to improve the health systems and to address the non-communicable disease as well as the communicable disease. So this tobacco control is a win-win the, the situation uh, the, uh, and the strategies. Uh, so they just they are, you know FCTC offers that they are, uh, the best practices. One of the best practices the ban smoking in all indoor public places, both places and public transport that will, that would contribute to to uh, to reduce or to prevent the exposure to secondhand smokes. So the one of the examples I, I have presented here we monitor the PM 2.5 in in a smoking the bar in a, in a, in Myanmar in Mandalay. Uh, you can see the the, uh, uh, the, the PM 2.5 uh, is a, it's a beyond it's quite quite high compared to the WSO standard 25 microgram per cubic meters. 
So they, uh, they, uh, they in the right side, you can see the the, uh, the restaurants where the smoking is completely banned, all indoor places, and the, uh, the indoor air is really healthy, and we can breathe clean uh, clean air in that restaurant. So it this gives a the the, the excellent uh, the, the example that this if you ban the smoking in all indoor places, we can clean indoor air, and also we can offer uh, the the the, to, uh, the smoke the air to our childrens and other the the, the peoples. The another uh, the best example that uh, the and best strategy that FCTC offers is uh, the the pictorial health warnings. So you, uh, you can see that uh, uh, I have uh, I have given the two examples from Indonesia and the Nepal, uh, and it uh, it warns the peoples and it uh, it offers. The, the really uh, the effective health promotions to the smokers who think to quit smoking. In in in, uh, uh, the, in the Nepal, about 60% of the, the peoples they they thought they they can quit smoking because of the particular health warning, and uh, say around the 40 uh, 40 of the Indonesian smokers they thought they can uh, they can quit smoking because of the particular health warning. But, uh, the, it's a really effective strategy. If you look at the second slide, the, uh, uh, at least the, uh, uh, I compare. Yes. Just, just have half a minute uh, more. Okay, Sorry. thanks. And uh, the uh, uh, in Nepal, so about 55 percent of the smoker they reduce their, their sorry, they reduce their this number of cigarettes uh, to from 11 to 5. That's a big reduction. Because of the pictorial health warnings, it was in 27% uh, uh, in the Indonesian settings. But overall, I would like to say the larger pictorial health warning has a larger impact to inform, to educate the people on the danger of smoking and tobacco use. So the, the another strategy is a quit day. So the, uh, uh, that, that we need to promote through our health systems. We 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 did some study in many the Indonesia, India, Bangladesh, China. And simply brief advice produce uh, the more than 60 percent of food tests to our health systems. So the another uh, the strategy to ban the, the, uh, the all types of tobacco advertising promotion and sponsorships. One of the example here is uh, in Indonesia, Jakarta. The Jakarta has recently banned all types of tobacco advertising. So this is the best strategy to uh, prevent the, the, the new initiations and to prevent the smoking among our children. Uh, so this is really uh, extraordinary the, the strategy that IFCTC offers. The another one is the best uh, the strategy that I would say if uh, the tax increase, price increase, uh, all tobacco product uh, related tobacco products that would be the really effective one. So it would offer the it would uh, create the the, uh, the such an environment that where uh, the, the people cannot buy the smoking or tobacco related products. The, the uh, to uh, products and because uh, if you raise the tax, uh, cigarettes and the tobacco products will be very expensive. The France has offered the beautiful examples that the price increase and the consumption goes down at the same time. The lung cancer also the they uh, also going down. So that's the wonderful example that. Uh, the, so around the globe, we can see there are many good examples. Uh, there, like the WHO Health Organizer offers the best package that we call Empower package. Uh, so, so that's the one the, the, we need to go uh, and implement in each and every country. And always, uh, the tobacco industry claims that the tobacco farmers with them. So, but we did the one study in Indonesia, and in the, the, the Indonesian tobacco farmers they support tobacco controls, and they are willing to sort of switch their for the farming easily. And there are significant numbers of tobacco farmers. They already switched the, their tobacco to another area, and they are making really good progress and good their the, the business from the other. Uh, the non-tobacco, uh, the farming, that vegetables and uh, coffee and tea and other areas. So I would like to say here and conclude my presentation here. That for all these things, the the political commitment is critical. But the government's commitment is really uh, needed now because government has a mandate to make a legislation, implementation, enforcement, monitoring and evaluations. At the same time, we all civil societies. The the, uh, the academic institutes and government has to work together. So I would like to highlight here: every government has a is a right time to set the smart targets and goals that can be measured, 
and also they are they, they, they are delivered at the, at the national and sub-national level. So let's do work, let's uh, fight together to end this uh, the epidemic. Thank you very much. So I stop here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Baum. Now let us hear from our next panelist, Professor Patricia Rivera, Medical Director, Bronchoscopy and Pulmonary Function Lab, University of Carolina at Chapel Hill, American College of Chest Physicians and Forum of International Respiratory Societies or FIRS. Over to you, Dr. Patricia. Dr. Patricia, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to be part of this uh, webinar. Um, I'm here to speak to you about um, lung cancer. Do we have the slides available for me to go through? Yes, yes. Hello? Hello? Um, I was looking for the slides. Um, do I, can you bring those up for me? They are there, I think. The slide is there. Um, they're not on my screen. Are you sharing your screen? Uh, no, ma'am. I, I am, yes, I am sharing my screen. I can see uh, Dr. Soraya Kant and Dr. Elif Dagli on my on my screen. I don't know if you can see me, but I don't have my slides, so I'm going to try to bring them up separately. Just just a moment. Just I okay. think there is some technological problem. Just a moment. Just give us a moment. Okay. Thank you. And if you can't find them, I can certainly um, speak. Um, there we are. Thank you so much. I'm just going to advance. Can you advance the slides for me? Thank you so much, um, and, and again, thank you for inviting me to be here. Um, I was asked to speak to you about lung cancer, and more importantly, um, to to highlight the uh, awareness uh, for Lung Cancer Day, um, which was August 1st, 2015. And I think given the previous presentation regarding the significant dangers of tobacco exposure and, and how they're linked to uh, lung cancer, um, it's, it's critical that um, we all focus on this very uh, important disease. If you can just... Thank you. Um, one of the things that we um, teach our medical students and our residents um, is not only the importance of tobacco exposure in terms of lung cancer risk, but that lung cancer risk is likely uh, multifactorial. And when we're considering individuals who are at risk for this disease, very important in addition to age and uh, tobacco exposure or other factors such as occupational exposure, probably one of the most important occupational exposures is asbestos. We know that the combination of asbestos and uh, tobacco 
uh, can significantly increase an individual's risk for developing bronchogenic carcinoma. Also very important is our family history of lung cancer. A first degree relative with lung cancer increases an individual's risk, whether that individual is a smoker or a non-smoker, for developing uh, lung cancer. As pulmonologists, um, we are always concerned about smokers who develop emphysema because I believe, and I think many of us would agree, that emphysema is also a significant risk factor for lung cancer. And in those lines, in terms of underlying lung diseases, pulmonary fibrosis has also been linked um, to, uh, to lung cancer risk. An individual who has had a prior history of a, a tobacco-related cancer, whether it be esophageal cancer, head and neck cancer, or an early stage lung cancer is also at increased risk for developing a new primary of the lung or a second primary uh, of the lung. We now have screening modalities um, for uh, lung cancer. The low dose uh, chest CT uh, has, been, um, uh, has been shown to be effective with a relative risk reduction in lung cancer mortality in patients who are screened with low-dose chest CT. This screening modality is recommended for patients uh, between the ages of 55 and 80 who have more than 30-pack years of smoking and who have, uh, if their former smokers have quit smoking within uh, the last 15 years. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time seeing these. Um, lung cancer is a very lethal disease. It has a very high prevalence rate and an even higher mortality rate. Uh, worldwide, uh, there are approximately 1.8 million new lung cancer cases. Uh, this was data from 2012. Approximately 1.6 million people in the world will die from lung cancer. In fact, more people will die from lung cancer worldwide than from tuberculosis, malaria, and HIV combined. In the United States, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death in both um, men and women. Lung cancer kills more people each year in the United States than prostate, uh, colon, uh, breast cancer, um, and pancreatic cancer combined. Lung cancer kills more women in the United States than breast, ovarian, and uterine cancers uh, combine. And it's really um, daunting when you ask um, individuals what is the leading cause of cancer death, at least when you ask in the United States, particularly in women, they will say that it is uh, breast cancer. Um, it was estimated that by the end of 2015, lung cancer was going to surpass breast cancer as the leading cause of cancer death in women in Europe. So this is a pretty significant um, uh, disease, again, not only because of its high prevalence, but more importantly because of its high mortality. Uh, tobacco uh, is still by far the most important risk factor um, for the development of uh, lung cancer. Um, and it accounts for 70% of the uh, lung cancer uh, deaths. Let's go back to the previous slide, please. Um, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time seeing. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, the disease in um, men uh, has actually, the prevalence of lung cancer in the United States among men has actually uh, started to decline, um, which is uh, very important. In some um, populations uh, in the United States, it still remains um, at a steady state, particularly among uh, African American uh, men in the United States. Um, among women, the prevalence is probably plateaued and starting to decrease, but it is still concerning that there are a lot of young women teenage girls um, that continue uh, start to smoke and continue to smoke every year uh, in the United States. The uh, highest estimated rates um, for lung cancer are in uh, North America among women, uh, followed by uh, Northern Europe, uh, and the lowest uh, rates are in uh, Western and Middle Africa. Next slide, please. Um, 
I, I'm having a hard time um, bringing this slide up a little bit higher so I can review it with you. Is there any way that you can amplify this? Hello? Is there any way that you can amplify the slide, please? All right. I will amplify it on my screen here. Thank you very much. So just uh, to review in terms of health factors, uh, again, smoking by far the most important risk factor for lung cancer, but we have to think about other risk factors because this is likely multifactorial hit, as I like to think about. Um, I think we have to remember that occupational exposures, particularly asbestos, are very important. Um, underlying lung diseases, such as emphysema uh, and fibrotic lung disease, silicosis has also been associated with, um, with lung cancer, and tuberculosis with subsequent uh, scarring. A family history of um, uh, lung cancer is incredibly important, not only for smokers, but also for non-smokers, as well as a prior history of um, a smoking-related uh, lung cancer. Lung cancer, as I mentioned, is the most common worldwide cause of death uh, from, lung can from cancer in both uh, men and women. It is responsible for nearly one in five cancer deaths, and it, um, as I mentioned earlier, will kill more people each year in the United States than colon, breast, prostate, and pancreatic cancer combined. The highest incidence of lung cancer is in northern um, uh, America and in uh, northern European countries. The lowest incidence is in Africa, Latin America, and the Caribbean. Early signs of lung cancer uh, can include symptoms of cough, uh, dyspnea, uh, that's out of proportion to patients underlying history of uh, lung disease. Um, patients can present with chest pain, patients can present with um, hemoptysis, but often patients present with nonspecific symptoms of uh, fatigue, uh, malaise, weight loss, and anorexia. And I think those are very concerning signs. Next slide, please. So again, lung cancer is responsible for nearly one in five cancer deaths. So a serious, serious uh, disease, probably one of the le most lethal illnesses known to humankind. Next slide, please. For decades, uh, lung cancer has been the most common worldwide cause of uh, cancer death. Uh, again, this has been the case in the United States, and it's rap rapidly increasing as the leading cause of cancer death in many other parts of the world. Next slide, please. As mentioned earlier, um, more women will die from uh, lung cancer than from breast, uterine, and ovarian cancer combined. So lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death in women in North America, and in many parts of Europe it has surpassed breast cancer as the leading cause of cancer death. Next slide, please. And I'm having a, a hard time seeing this uh, slide um, but I think, you know, the, the title says why we need to pay attention to lung cancer. We need to pay attention to lung cancer because it is probably one of the most lethal illnesses uh, known to humankind. And I think this is all about um, smoking uh, prevent, prevention, smoking uh, cessation. Um, also, I think now in the era of screening about identifying high-risk individual, individuals who may benefit from low-dose uh, CT, and also about early diagnosis and recognizing symptoms that um, may indicate uh, lung cancer. I think we often forget that uh, lung cancer 
can occur in non-smokers. Um, and more commonly than not, it's in non-smoking women. And I think that we need to keep that in mind whenever we are evaluating women with unusual symptoms and symptoms that don't improve after we initiate therapies for asthma or bronchitis. Um, because one of the things that we, we can miss is lung cancer in, in women, particularly in young women, who have had a very, very uh, low smoking history or, um, or no smoking history at all. Um, in the past year, the Chess Foundation, um, which is the foundation of the American College of Chess Physicians, has created public service announcements and surveyed fans at sporting events um, and have asked a question about lung cancer. Um, and it's, again, interesting, you know, when asked what is the leading cause of cancer death among men and women in the United States, many, many individuals will answer breast cancer is the most common cause of cancer death in women, um, colon cancer and skin cancer. Um, but again, the most uh, important um, uh, cause of, of lung cancer death in women is breast, is lung cancer. Excuse me. Next slide, please. I think one of the um, issues that centers around um, lung cancer is the stigma of I brought this on uh, because I smoke. And I think often uh, smokers are less likely to seek uh, medical attention um, because they fear that, you know, well, it must be cancer. I brought this on. I've been, I've been smoking for X number of years. Um, and I think that um, the other thing that's incredibly difficult for uh, smokers, particularly smokers who are being considered for screening, is, is smoking cessation. I mean, this is a serious addiction um, and one that for, I think, many years has had little attention. Um, and I think it's our job to um, let smokers know that, you know, lung cancer is a multifactorial process. Yes, tobacco is the most important uh, risk factor, but it, we have to let go of all those uh, stigma. We have to let go of the nihilism um, regarding uh, smoking uh, and, and why people smoke and really help individuals uh, get the medical help that they need, try to diagnose lung cancer at an early stage, and more importantly, really uh, help patients to um, achieve uh, uh, successful smoking cessation. And we can only do that through uh, by asking, advising, counseling, and constantly bringing up uh, the issue of how can we help you uh, quit uh, this habit. Um, early detection uh, remains uh, a challenge uh, for lung cancer. Yes, low-dose uh, screening CT is a very useful tool, but we have to balance the risks uh, and the benefits of screening, but without doubt for high-risk individuals. Uh, this is a modality that should be considered uh, in patients who do not have uh, significant competing comorbidities. We have to keep in mind that um, it is all primarily about uh, smoking, continuing our efforts to um, support tobacco prevention, very, very critical as our former speakers uh, mentioned, and also promote uh, very, very strong efforts towards smoking cessation, but keep in mind and remind uh, the smokers that it isn't just about tobacco, it's also about other exposures, um, family history, and underlying diseases, um, all of those things uh, play into the risk of lung cancer. I think that's the uh, end of my slides. I'm happy to take any questions. Hello? Yes, over to Professor Dagli. Hello. Hello. I, we will now listen to the globally known expert, Professor Elif Dagli from the International Union Against Tuberculosis 
and lung disease or the union. She will tell us if shisha or hookah as it is, as it is known, is it as deadly as other forms of tobacco such as cigarettes and chewing tobacco. Over to you Professor Dagli. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm delighted to join you from Istanbul after many days of snowing. Uh, it is sunshine here. Um, could I have my slides please? Um, yes, yes. Uh, while, while they are put on, I, I, I will start talking uh, in the interest of time. Yes. Um, um, smoking accounts for 30% of cancers and 87% of lung cancer. A smoker is 23 times more likely to get cancer than a non-smoker. In other words, if people never use tobacco, we would have only one-tenth of lung cancers we have now. So this is a really dramatic situation. Uh, well, these are not my slides. Yes, that's it. Can I have the third slide, please? I've jumped into the third slide already. The third one, please. Thank you very much. Um, in 20th century, tobacco killed 100 million people. It's hard to believe. It's more than any wars. Uh, or any natural disasters. But if we don't do anything now, we will have killed one million people and at the end of this century. Next slide, please. And the epidemic is now shifting to the developing countries. Uh, in By 2030, there will be more than 8 million people dying each year of tobacco use and more than 80% of these people will be from developing countries. So the, the disaster is changing uh, the land. The next slide please, it is showing you that this is tobacco atlas on the fifth slide. Can we have the fifth slide please? The fifth slide is showing us the tobacco atlas. The darker the color is, the more people are using tobacco. And you can here see on the top map, which is the general without any gender, showing how dark it is in the Asia. Uh, but if you look at the woman map, uh, except for Europe, women are not smoking so much compared with men on the right hand side. However, this is just looking at the cigarette smoking. If we look at other forms of tobacco, women are using more now. Six slide, please. Next slide. Can we have the next slide? In the, in the next slide, you will see that the epidemic is changing. It is increasing prevalence of water pipe now. And you can here see the youth using in U.S and Jordan, comparing how Jordanian girls and boys are uh, using water pipe as uh, the Florida boys and girls. So epidemic is changing. It's not classical cigarettes we have to look into anymore. Next slide, please. And if we go into water pipe, the culturally used forms of tobacco, then this next slide, please. Next slide. Thank you. You can see that Middle East is a little bit darker now using water pipe and especially this time it is women. In the past years we always thought that tobacco epidemic shifts from men to women by evolution in each country. But now we have realized that cigarette smoking is not an epidemic that is going into Asia and North Africa and other parts of the world. It is other forms of tobacco that is causing the epidemic. So, uh, next slide, please. You will you will see that in some countries in uh, uh, Middle East and North Africa. Look at Saudi Arabian women; they are using water pipe more than uh, men. So this epidemic, we were always thinking about cigarettes, but tobacco industry got women of the developing countries 
and conservative societies through uh, water pipe use. So the next epidemic of Lyme cancer will be coming among these women in the um, uh, different regions. Next slide, please. What is a water pipe? Water pipe is a flask. Um, it is um, a flask um, uh, uh, with a charcoal and tobacco on it. And when tobacco is burned, people suck the, um, uh, the smoke that is going through the water and into their lungs. And most people believe that because of the water, uh, it's going through the water, it is filtered and less harmful. Next slide, please. Today's water pipe epidemic is not an Ottoman tradition. Next slide. Next slide, please. Yes. These are you have three more minutes. You have three more minutes, Elif. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So let's let's go quickly. Next slide. We the difference between um, uh, water pipe and cigarettes is. Um, it is a recent epidemic, as you can see here. And the next slide, please. It is mostly tobacco mixed with sweeteners and aromatic flavors, which is appealing to young people, which is used in uh, cities more than uh, rural areas. Next slide, please. And if you look at the topography of water pipe and cigarette smoking, it's different because of the puff volume. The number, can we proceed the slides quickly? Um, puff volume, number, duration and intervals uh, are compared. Next plus, next one, next one, I passed this one. Next please. Next please. So if you look at the machine generated smoke content of the single water pipe episode, it's 1.7 times more nicotine, 8.4 times more carbon monoxide and 36 times more tar than a single cigarette. So mainstream water pipe smoke, next, uh, next slide please, mainstream water pipe smoke contains high numbers of ultra fine particles of medium size which is much smaller than cigarette smoke and smoke inhaled by water pipe users includes charcoal combustion products, next slide, in addition to the constituent of mast cell. Mainstream and side stream water pipe smoke contain high quantities of carcinogenic substances, carbon monoxide, aldehydes, ultrafine particles, and other toxicants. Next slide, please. Water pipe smokers have high risk of lung cancer. Can we proceed a few more slides, please? Next one. Water pipe smokers have higher risk for lung cancer, hepatitis C, tuberculosis, COPD, and low birth weight deliveries. Next, please. <coughs> next slide, next slide. In summary, next slide. Mainstream water pipe, next slide, please. Contains high concentrations of small particles. Uh, mean particle size is smaller. Water pipe is more dangerous than cigarettes. In order to protect non-users, the same measures of cigarettes are valid. The next slide, please. And World Health Organization. Next slide. Uh, that, that's it. Water pipe smoking uh, is equivalent to 100 cigarette use. One episode of water pipe session is equal to 100 cigarettes smoked. Next slide. And finally, if we have to summarize the risk of water pipe, can I have the next slide please? Even after passing through water, smoke contains carbon monoxide, metals and carcinogens. Secondhand smoke from water pipes contain tobacco and fuel chemicals. Sharing water pipe may transmit infections and water pipe smoking poses serious potential uh, health hazards and it's not a safe alternative to cigarettes and especially the epidemic among females in Asia and North Africa is alarming. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Dagli. We now have Vanessa, Head of Communications, Union for International Cancer Control, UICC, which is the convener of World Cancer Days. Over to you, Vanessa, for more news on what to expect around World Cancer Day this year. Hi everybody, um, thank you 
very much for uh, having me and um, sticking around until the end. Um, could I get the slides up, please? Okay. My slides up. Okay. So, uh, today to speak about uh, World Cancer the 4th of February, next week on, it's a, that takes place all over the world, nice day, and created in the hope of uniting the world under awareness about cancer as the focus that it can be used by absolute way to raise awareness for different countries, different regions. Um, the as many people as possible the fourth of February each year. In turn, we can use the day yes. Why this day is specific types of can cancer, uh, but the whole will actually million people, which um, four million of uh, at we really do see World Cancer Day spread the word and raise the pro particularly the world's meat to you today. You um, the screen, the what you've seen, uh, what we these figures come from the cancer. Um, the um, blue the number of new cases in red is the number of deaths. Now, the incidence and um, rate of mortality is increasing and why cancer is a growing issue around the world. Um, it's been around um, for the last, actually, um, as a campaign has really grown and changed over the last five. Um, in 2012, we launched a new World Cancer Day strategy, and this is really to build the largest, what we like to call, Creative Commons campaign um, for everyone to really be able to Cancer Day. And what this meant is that we wanted to develop a central but adaptable campaign that includes template materials and resources that will really guide the day, um, the topics and the themes. Um, the second prong of that is that we, um, as UICC and the campaign, was designed to empower UICC member organisations to serve and the activities and that members, partners, stakeholders, media, public, individuals, absolutely anyone can really use and adapt the campaign materials as they see fit and are relevant to the settings in which they're being used, the um, context in which they're being used. Um, or, and then through this um, way of sharing an overarching campaign. We've really ha hoped to harness third party and public support for World Cancer Day and really maximise the opportunities to see, hear or read about World Cancer Day and in turn generate and that's where we come into play as um, being such an important part of World Cancer Day and the campaign. So our role as UICC is really as conveners and coordinators of the day, but we are not a public facing organisation ourselves. We're very much a business to business organisation and our business are our member organisations. 
there working in communities around the world to help um, raise the importance of cancer as an issue that should be profiled on the global health and development agenda. Um, World Cancer Day this year and for the next three years is um, taking place under the banner of We Can, I Can. So the idea is that this is looking at how we can take a pos positive and proactive approach um, to cancer. You've heard from the other speakers today just how vast um, an issue this is uh, and how it really does need to be dealt with. Um, that there is a huge global burden of cancer, but there is actually a lot that can be done um, to impact uh, the cancer burden for the better. Vanessa, can you wind up please now? Because yeah, uh, sure. it's all my time. Thank you. Okay, um, so the campaign will be taking place under the theme of We Can, I Can. <coughs> um, we have 10 We Can messages and 10 I Can messages, and we encourage everybody to pick up and use these messages in a positive and proactive way to um, really promote uh, the concept of World Cancer Day next Thursday. We also encourage you to really get involved in the campaign through social media, being an international uh, campaign which takes place all over the world, currently in 120 countries with over 700 events taking place. Um, social media is a great way to really engage and we encourage um, everybody to get involved where possible. Um, so please do support um, World Cancer Day next th Thursday. Um, focus on uh, any of the cancer messages that you can and um, we hope to see um, next Thursday lots of um, media really drawing attention to cancer around the world. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Our next panelist is the new president of Indian Chess Society, Professor Surikant. He is also head of respiratory medicine department at King George's Medical University and the organizing secretary of the 70th National Conference of TB and Chest Diseases or NATCON in February this year. Over to you Dr. Surekant. The webinar on lung cancer and lung cancer as we know Lung cancer, as we know, this is the one of the most common cancers, not only globally, but also in our country, that is in India. And its incidence is increasing 1 to 5 percent per year, that is more alarming. And around 1.6 million people across the world get lung cancer annually, 1.6 million annually. And in India also, around 63,000 people develop lung cancer annually. And cigarette and weedy smoking, we are, we are listening about the water pipe, now we are focusing on weedy because in this part of the part of the world, that is in India and of course this uh, surrounding country, the weedy smoking is more prevalent than the cigarette smoking and this is the single most important risk factor for lung cancer and weedy smoking that is more carcinogenic than the cigarette smoking. Weedy is basically an indigenous product of smoking resembling the cigarette but it is more harmful than the cigarette. Now there is a tenfold increased risk of lung cancer in smokers and 20 times more risk in heavy smokers, that is more than 20 cigarettes per day consumer. History of active tobacco smoking is present in 87% of males and in 85% of females in cases of lung cancer. And if you see the common clinical features of the, uh, the, the lung cancer which mimic the pulmonary tuberculosis. And that is the main region, main problem in this country, not only in this country, but in this, the, these all developing countries where tuberculosis is also prevalent and lung cancer is also prevalent, that the symptoms of lung cancer, they are closely mimicking to the symptoms of pulmonary tuberculosis and these symptoms are cough, respiration, fever, hemoptysis, that is blood in the sputum, weight loss and breathlessness. However, careful history and examination can help patients to suspect lung cancer and to differentiate lung cancer from pulmonary tuberculosis. So how can you uh, differentiate? That can be a very important approach. How can you differentiate the pulmonary tuberculosis that is also very much prevalent in this country and around all developing countries from lung cancer? You see the age, 
usually lung age in pulmonary process while in lung cancer we usually age with middle age and elderly if you see the smoking history it may be present or absent in pulmonary process but usually present in lung cancer as i mentioned that around 80% 7% of lung cancer 87% of lung cancer they are having positive smoking history and if you see the pattern of fever low grade with evening rise fever is a pattern of pulmonary tuberculosis while fever in case of lung cancer is non spastic if you see the weight loss it is slowly and it steadily in cases of pulmonary tuberculosis while it is sudden weight loss in lung cancer if you see in hemoptysis symptom that is blunt in scrotum that's a ugly feature of pulmonary tuberculosis while usually it is in the form of a stinking and it is a late feature in cases of lung cancer If you see the breathlessness, it is marked as a spastic in pulmonary tuberculosis with advanced lung involvement, while it can be <coughs> of lung cancer. If you see the type of chest pressure which can differentiate between pulmonary tuberculosis and lung cancer, it may be present or absent in pulmonary tuberculosis, but usually present and it is of severe, sharp, and uh, shooting type of uh, pain in lung cancer. If you see a clumping or the, a, a kind of abnormality present in the nails. this may be present or absent in pulmonary tuberculosis but usually present in lung cancer if you see the lymph nodes they are form fake and non dental in case of tubercular etiology and and they are painless they are matted and made up into cold abscess while in cases of lung cancer if they are present they are hard usually single may be multiple then usually non matted if you see the tenderness over the chest that is painful feeling over the chest usually absent in case of pulmonary tuberculosis while it is usually present in cases of lung cancer and if you see the uh, change in voice or hoarseness of voice it is rare in pulmonary tuberculosis while usually it can be present if it can be involvement of left recurrent laryngeal nerve in cases of lung cancer if you see the back ache you is absent in pulmonary tuberculosis but it may present in in, in tuberculosis of the spine that is called pots spine while present if metastasis occurs in cases of lung cancer in the spine if you see the paralysis it is present if associated with pots spine or tuberculosis of the spine but if there is a metastasis of lung cancer in the spine it can be present in lung cancer if you see other than the uh, clinical abnormality if you just see the chest x ray what is the different presentation of radiological presentation in cases of pulmonary tuberculosis and in cases of lung cancer then there is a upper zone predilection for pulmonary tuberculosis in case of pulmonary tuberculosis while non spastic in lung cancer the common radiological shadows in pulmonary tuberculosis are parent canal infiltrate lymphadenopathy miliary or fluid fusion and cavitation while in case of lung cancer it can be a huge mass higher prominence pulmonary nodule widening of mediastinum or partial collapse of the lung, lung or lobe resolving confrontation that is resolving and dissolving pneumonia cavitation elevated diaphragm pleural fusion rib erosion etc if you start anti tubercular treatment of course within 4 weeks you will get good response if you are dealing with pulmonary tuberculosis while you will not get response if it is lung cancer so uh, you have to review with the patient uh, unfortunately have been put on anti tubercular treatment and not responding to so review or diagnose if it is not pulmonary tuberculosis it might be lung cancer if you see the ct scan the ct scan can show the infiltrate cavities which is centric in case of pulmonary tuberculosis while usually it is a mass or eccentric cavity in case of lung cancer the other investigation which you can do for differentiating the pulmonary tuberculosis and lung cancer that can be the sputum examination you can do the sputum for a acid fast bacilli examination that is for tubercular bacilli which may be positive in pulmonary tuberculosis around 50% of pulmonary tuberculosis it is it has got positive picture in sputum for acid fast bacilli that is tubercular bacilli and for lung cancer examination you can have the examination of the sputum for malignant cells and positive malignant cells can make the diagnosis of lung cancer if the patient is presenting with pleural fluid then you can draw the fluid and you can examine the fluid so usually it is destroyed uh, color in, in case of pulmonary or pleural tuberculosis while it is usually hemorrhagic and rapid filling type in case of lung cancer if you if, you, if there is a lung lymph node you can perform the lymph node epilepsy or biopsy and our obstructive examination you can find the tuberculosis picture of the malignant that is cancer picture while one of the important tool for diagnosis in lung cancer is bronchoscopy and usually within normal limit until otherwise it's a better to go to tuberculosis 
And in case of lung cancer, that is evident usually at the bronchial growth. You just have 30 seconds left, okay, so they can Just half a minute left. This will be some cases here. You can see very well this is the radiological picture of lung cancer that, that is confirmed by on CT scan on right side next week. And here also there's a cases upper down shadow, mimicking the pulmonary tuberculosis. In this country, most of the physicians can misdiagnose this picture as a pulmonary tuberculosis. While if you do the CT scan, scan of this patient, then of course there's a huge mass in the CT scan and you can very well differentiate that this is not pulmonary tuberculosis, this is lung cancer. Next week. And this is my announcement. This is the 78th National Conference of Tuberculosis and Chest Disease, which to be held on 28th and 21st February, preceded by workshop on various topics on 19th February, venue is Scientific Convention Center, King's Road Medical University, Lucknow, India. And this is being organized by Department of Respiratory Medicine, King's Road Medical University, Lucknow, in association with UPTB Association under the aegis of Tuberculosis Association of India. And this conference will have a very uh, wide uh, inclusion of tuberculosis as well as an important session on lung cancer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Surikant. Our next panelist was Dr. Pankaj Chaturvedi, a senior cancer surgeon from Tata Memorial Hospital. But since he is involved with an operation right now, we have Dr. Apur Gar, who will be presenting on his behalf. Over to you, Dr. Apur Gar. Dr. Gar, are you there? Dr. Apoor Garg, we cannot hear you. Dr. Garg, hello, Dr. Apoor Garg, are you there? I think there is some problem at the end of Dr. Garg. So we now go move on to, we'll come back to Dr. Garg if he joins us later. Let us listen now to Professor Michael Boyer, Chief Clinical Officer, Chris O'Brien, Lifehouse Australia, who is also representing at the, the 2016 Asia Pacific Lung Cancer Conference Secretariat. Over to you, Dr. Boyer. Dr. Boyer, is, are you there? Hello. 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 Yes. Doctor Dar. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. We can hear you now. Uh, uh, yes, we can hear you, Doctor Dar. Please continue. Uh, uh, Ma'am, can you see my slides? Ma'am, can you see my slides? We can't see your slide just now, but we can hear you. Okay. Okay. So I. Uh, so I. Good evening, uh, everybody. I am present. I am present. Uh, my presentation uh, is my on oral cancer. On oral cancer. On I am Dr. Dr. Pankaj Chaturvedi. Pankaj Chaturvedi. I am working in Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai. Oral cancer, as we know, is one of the most common cancers in the world. And it is one of the most common cancers in India and Southeast Asia. We have more than 300,000 new cases per year and 150,000 deaths per year disease. Out of those, two-thirds are developing. The most common causes of oral cancer are tobacco, and Fanconi's anemia. Also, it is associated with marijuana use and positive family. 
Oral cancer is one of the best model for prevention and screening of diseases because we have pre-malignant lesions which if diagnosed in right time can help us in treating the disease and also decrease the mortality. There has been a research by Shankar Narayan et al. which was published in Lancet in the year 2006. It was a cluster randomized trial which was done in Kerala, India and he showed that health education combined with visual examination helps decrease oral cancer or users of tobacco hall as compared to people who were only given health education. There are various aids available with us like Visilite oral CDA use and best examination tool is the visual examination by oral by health group. Coming on to the management of this disease. The best surgery is still the gold standard of treatment. We can't hear you, Dr. Gard. Hello. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, we can. We lost you in between. You just you just have two more minutes, Dr. Gard, to wrap up. Hello? I think we will move on to the question and answer session since uh, uh, Professor Boyer is not here. So we, we already have a few questions. Badanitso Kateta wants to know what are the current statistics of cancer in Africa and what are the major causes of each type of cancer? Would any of the panelists like to answer that? Hello, can the panelists hear me? Vanessa, are you there? Hello. Yes, I'm. Yes, I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. Uh, can you answer this question from the table? Yes. So, yes. Uh, so cancer, uh, in, cancer in Africa is Africa is uh, quite very uh, dependent on, on the um, the country, the, the, country, uh, the uh, a large a increase. Large increase. Actually, we will be so seeing, we will be seeing um, the largest um, increase, the largest in increase in the past in ten years in regions, um, regions particularly um, sub-Saharan Africa, sub where we Africa, expect to see um, the largest um, global burden global of burden cancer represented. Cancer um, represented. Um, the region is um, suffering, um, particularly, um, particularly um, with, um, around 
cervical cancer for women. Cancer for women. Um, and um, but what is interesting um, based on today's speakers is the increasing particularly um, due to the fact that we're seeing ever increasing rates of um, tobacco consumption amongst populations in Africa with um, other countries uh, in around the world improving um, legislation around tobacco control. Uh, the tobacco industry is making particular targets um, for the region of Africa where uh, legislation and legislation and um, um, in country, country, country um, data uh, around data uh, around uh, Africa, then I suggest you uh, take a look at Globocan. If you go to the IARC website, which is iarc.fr, and you can do a search by country, by country, by country, and with all of the information available. Thank you. Uh, we have Elizabeth who wants who has raised her hand. I think she wants to ask a question. Elizabeth, please ask your question. Can you hear me, Elizabeth? Hello. Elizabeth is a nurse from Kenya. She wants to know how can we strengthen early detection? Of cancer. Is Elizabeth, that, would you like to is ask? That, is that in regards to early detection regards as, early as a whole detection. or in regards to certain types of cancer? At, at the lowest, she wants to know at the community level. What can uh, be done uh, at the community level? Because uh, she say, she is from Kenya and she says health seeking behavior in itself is a challenge. And uh, then another question which most people ask is that even if I get screened and cancer has been detected, what next? Treatment is expensive and only available in private hospitals. So what is the way forward? Um, um, Okay, so okay, so as we know, diagnosing we cancer, know, diagnosing cancer is, um, and that not um, all cancers not actually all cancers show actually early signs and symptoms. Signs and other warning signs, signs can actually appear quite late um, when the late, cancer is um, banned. But increasing awareness of signs and symptoms um, and the importance of timely treatment has actually been shown to survival rates from the cancer rate. Um, and as we know, um, as we know um, um, because finding cancer early, early cancer almost early always makes it easier to treat or even cure. Or even cure. Um, how um, countries how you know about that is to really, is to really um, one of the um, one of the biggest struggles biggest in cities struggles around the world is reduced world stigma around cancer and, and making people feel comfortable talking comfortable about it. Talking about it. Um, Raising cancer is an issue at a community level. Um, making people aware of what cancer is, what cancer is, and symptoms, and healthcare professionals at the primary care level really play really a big part in that and in helping people to um, feel comfortable in understanding what cancer is, how to identify what those signs and symptoms are, and to um, speak. Um, uh, treatment uh, and treatment diagnosis, and treatment and treatment treatment where possible, where possible. So education is really a, a big uh, key, a big key for that, and for that. and animals do play a um, a, a very um, a large and uh, critical large role and critical in role. early detection at a community level. At a community level. Thank you. Uh, I request the participants to please keep on sending your questions using the chat function or raise your virtual hand you are seeing on the screen. Uh, we have a question from Catherine, uh, who is a journalist from Zimbabwe. Catherine, would you like to ask your question or should I go quickly? All right. Catherine wants to know 
why are there many people who are living with HIV who are also getting various types of cancers? Is there a correlation between loss of humanity and cancer invasion? Vanessa, would you like to answer? Um, it's a very interesting, very interesting point, point, actually. Um, um, the, the advent of, um, advent of um, communicable diseases has meant that it's opened up for what is called comorbidity with um, chronic, diseases. Um, chronic diseases. So people who so suffer people from, um, from HIV, HIV are actually are actually now through the uh, access to, uh, to antiretroviral medication um, and improved um, uh, capacity to live longer term with uh, HIV means that um, they're actually they're actually chronic disease such as um, cancer. Cancer, heart disease, lung disease, lung disease and diabetes. And, diabetes. and there are a number of there are a number of actually um, linked to infection. Um, infection. And, um, and those infections, um, those infections, are uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, um, people um, are more at risk of they suffer from diabetes. Thank you. Uh, Manpreet, would you like to ask your question? Manpreet? Manpreet from Delhi, would you like to ask the, your question? Uh, Manpreet wants to know uh, uh, is what is that what is the future course of action for initiatives forced at current users of tobacco for example intensive awareness campaigns followed by intensive secession initiatives uh, because uh, there is as there has been an alarming data on rising tobacco use so she wants to know what is the future course of action uh, dr garg would you like to answer that question Dr. Gar? Dr. Baum is not there, I think. We can send the question to Dr. Baum and Okay, so I think it's time to wrap up now. Uh, we will send the recording of the webinar as always to all the participants and uh, any more questions which the participants want to ask they can ask via email and we will pass it on to the panelists. Thank you everyone for being there and sharing your very very informative insights with all of us. Thanks.